You may have recently heard about 60-day dispensing. On the surface of it, sounds like a good idea. Good way to reduce medication costs and ease cost of living pressures. Unfortunately, the unintended consequences of this change will mean increased medication shortages, more hoarding of medications, increased risk of accidental poisonings and overdoses, more expensive healthcare, reduced hours, service and access to your pharmacy, and an explosion of people going to hospital emergency departments for basic healthcare needs. There are currently more than 450 active or anticipated medicine shortages in Australia. There are antibiotics, diabetes medications, medicines used to treat mental health conditions, and so many more. Doubling the amount of medicine a person can access at one time will mean some people will have multiple months worth of medicine hoarded at home, unused, while others miss out. Already, people are shopping around at pharmacies where their medication history is completely unknown to track down supplies of vital treatments. This pharmacy shopping increases the risk for medication errors for some of the most vulnerable people in our community. Medication wastage is already a common occurrence in Australia. If people double the medication that they have at home, it will only make the issue worse. This will be medicine that could have helped someone else that ends up in the bin. At a time when access to paracetamol and other painkillers is being limited to reduce the risk of accidental or intentional overdose, people will be accessing double the amount of antidepressants, double the amount of heart medications, diabetes medications, all that can and do kill people. If you don't have a concession or a pension card, your medicines will cost more, not less, as pharmacies attempt to keep their doors open. If you reach the safety net in the first half of the year, you will receive no financial benefit for all of the damage done through 60-day dispensing. While this is all happening, your community pharmacy will be forced to reduce opening hours, reduce services, increase prices, and restrict access to healthcare to those who can pay for it. Ask yourself, when was the last time you paid to talk to your pharmacist? This free access has been possible because of the dispensing fees we receive when we supply medications. If these fees are halved by doubling the amount of medicine supplied, pharmacies will be forced to make very difficult decisions to continue to operate. It will mean that your community pharmacy will no longer be a place you can just walk into to get quick and often free healthcare advice from highly trained and knowledgeable health professionals and assistants. You won't be able to go to your GP because they're already booked out for weeks. So instead, you'll need to present to the emergency room for any form of immediate care. If these changes aren't enough, then pharmacy staff will lose shifts, will lose wages, or will lose their jobs entirely as pharmacies struggle to remain open. But it won't be enough in every case. Pharmacies will close and the care they provide to the community will be lost. Please, if you think access to safe medication is important, or if you find any value in the care and advice from your local pharmacy, speak up against these changes, talk to your federal member to make them understand the risks to the health of our country these changes could cause.